Hey guys, how are you doing? Now, before you do any Metal Earth projects like this, you're going to need the right tools. Somehow I don't think this is going to work. No, wrong tools. Let's put these away and see if I can get the right ones out. Okay, we've got a selection of tools down here. You're going to need some tweezers, some flat nose and some uh, needle nose tweezers. There's various tweezers. There's positive tweezers that you've got to push like this. There are negative tweezers uh, that you've actually got to... You've got some, some pull down here you can grip stuff with. And then there's some reverse tweezers that you push to make a part and they'll grip. So there's all sorts of different kinds of tweezers. I get a lot of my stuff from Harbor Freight. It's real simple. You can get little kits of these dental here, dent, dental probes and things um, for craft making. And they come in little packs of five, for, you know, five bucks or something. You've got mandrels that are round. You can use these for bending things. In addition to that, of course, I've got all sorts of other round things and you can have little cones made when you can uh, start to shave those off and, and put a sharpener in there. I love this. This is my magnet which is a, a, a use for picking up some of the pieces sometimes that are too small. Plus, I've also got round surfaces. I've got one, two, three, four round surfaces of different diameters down here that I can use to shape. So this is a multi-purpose tool. Get off. Down here. You really don't need a craft knife, but I have it just in case. Again, I like that little, this is a circular mandrel that you can press and then you can actually shape things because it's semi-circular inside there. You're going to need to spend a little bit of money, you know, 10 bucks or something, on a decent net set of needle nose pliers. Um, you want to make sure there's no uh, daylight visible at the end. So when you grip something, you're actually gripping it and twisting it. Some of these, when they're across that mass produced, then you're going to see daylight at the end and they won't grip. So spend a little bit of money, check them out, see if you can see daylight on the end, make sure these surfaces are kept clean. Uh, keep these clean, spend a little bit of money on getting some good quality pliers. Again, Harbor Freight, you know, five bucks is, is, is fine. You can get some offset ones. These are a little, little large down here. And these, by the way, not only are good for holding things and twisting things, but you can put a flat piece along the side here and then bend it up. And I've also got coming uh, some flat bars that I saw on uh, Amazon that have a long slot in them and you can use those to put those in and help twist things up as well. This is a, a sample of tool that you really don't want to be buying because it's got grooves. Anything that has grooves is going to cause problems with the, your uh, very delicate metal earth sheets. So this is not a good quality tool. Avoid stuff that has teeth in it. Put that to one side. You're really going to need some snippers. <clears throat> Again, four or five bucks down Harbor Freight or, or, or you can get them online a little more. And then you, as you go around, you can start buying extra things. This is a pair of offset uh, beads, which I'm going to be using for forming things. You know, it's got a long slope down, rather like one of those, those drums. And I've got a whole slew of, of other little bits and bobs that, that one can use. And there are several people who are real experts on doing metal art model on the internet, on the YouTube. I am not. I've been doing this stuff for a couple of weeks. So, um, listen to the experts, and then grab a few tools, you know, 40 $45 or so is more than enough to get you started with all the tools, together with some models which are on average somewhere between $7 and $14 for the more complicated ones. Yes, you can go up to $30 for the big ones, but, you know... On average, eight nine dollars for two or three miles. You can have yourself a whole new hobby for less than fifty dollars. All you got to have on top of that is patience and time and somewhere obviously to work. Because I like to leave things out. If you're going to do resin molding and make little dioramas to bring your models alive, which I really like to do, uh, then of course you're going to be talking a little bit of extra expense. $30, $40 for some A and B resin, that's the resin plus the hardener, which you typically measure 50-50. Different manufacturers have different ratios, but most of them are 50-50. You'll read what's on, what's on the label, of course. You can get resin molds on Amazon, and then you can start making them. There are special pigments that you can buy on Amazon that will go in the resin, and you can do different colors as well. And, of course, there's a whole bunch of extra 
uh, accessories that you can get for making water effects, foam effects, snow effects, sand effects. Uh, you can start adding those to your collection. So uh, I'm looking to expand my skills as I go through in a hobby that hopefully should last uh, a lifetime or now I've retired. Um, and to keep my mind sharp, keep my manual dexterity going, give me an interest. And while I'm at home, wife looking at her stuff in there, I've got my little setup out here, I've got my little TV. I've got my, my portable AC, I've got, and I'm good to go. All I need is a good cup of tea, and I can enjoy myself. Most importantly, I'm also going to be my mind active, problem solving. Problems in, as I mentioned earlier, making a diorama for a model, and making the model come alive, thinking of creative ways that you can make this model a little bit more than it is. So that's what I've got for today. Hope you enjoyed that. Have some fun and see you on the upside. Hopefully I can get these girls done. <laughs>